<laughs> oh, life is good. Just another beautiful summer day here at the beautiful beaches of Dallas, Texas. Great ocean view. <laughs> hey, Cabana Boy, why don't you go ahead and fetch me another margarita? Huh? On the rocks. Yeah, thanks. Oh, what the hell? Come on, guys. Not cool. I'm living in my own fairy tale land over here. It's time to talk about Grant Williams, the newest Dallas Maverick official a few days ago. Three teams sign and trade. Four years, $54 million for Grant Williams, $13.5 million a, a year. That is tremendous value for a guy like Grant Williams. I'll explain why here in a second. Mavericks give up Reggie Bullock, a 2030. Uh, unprotected pick swap goes to San Antonio. That could end up being something down the line. But, you know, 2030, how old am I going to be? Oh, my fucking God. I'll be 35 years old. That makes me want to... The Mavericks somehow also get a couple second-round picks in this trade. I, Nico was in the kitchen. Nico was chefing it up. I want to talk about why I like this deal so much for the Dallas Mavericks and why I was so adamant that they go after a guy like this and why he just makes perfect sense for what the Mavericks have going on. First and foremost, 24 years old. That's one of the sneaky aspects about this offseason for the Mavericks. Heading into this offseason, I wanted them to do one of two things. Get better, obviously, was the thing I wanted them to do the most. But I also wanted them to get younger. Like, if they couldn't get better, if there wasn't a real pathway for them to really, really flesh out the roster, I wanted to get younger. I wanted to have some younger players in the building. That way, you know, you, you just weren't as old. You weren't so dependent on older guys. And they've done both. They've gotten younger this offseason, and they've gotten better. Like, Grant Williams is an upgrade over Reggie Bullock, and he's much, much, much younger. Another reason why I love this so much, Grant Williams is 24 years old. He'll turn 25 early in the season. But as of right now, he's 24 years old. He's been in 61 career playoff games. Like, that's a Bradley Beal regular season. Like, he has a Bradley Beal regular season's worth of career postseason games, 61. That's the most in the league for anyone 24 years or younger. DeAndre Ayton is the next closest with 45. So he's been in some wars. He's been in some battles. Obviously, you know, they had the Eastern Conference Finals run this year. And his, admittedly, his his time in the rotation was very strange, in and out. Uh, some DNPs throughout the postseason. But he was in the finals a, a season ago, two seasons ago, I guess now. And he was a big reason why they made it that far. Like, he was great that postseason for them. I mean, let's not forget, Game 7 of the second round against the Milwaukee Bucks in 2022, this man had a career-high 27 points, and he was 7 of 18 from 3. 7 of 18. I think he started the game 1 of 7 or 2 of 7 from 3. So you just do some simple math there. I'm not going to do it, but you should. 5 of 11, I'm pretty sure, the rest of the game from 3 in a Game 7. 7 of 18. 18 three-point attempts. He outscored Giannis in a game seven. Winner go home. He outscored Giannis Antetokounmpo. And a big reason for that was his defense. Like that's one of Grant Williams' calling cards is his defensive versatility, his ability to guard up positions. And he's a nuisance on some of the league's best players. Like he does a good job against, uh, against uh, Giannis. He does a decently good job against Joel Embiid. He's done a decently good job against Jokic. Of course, like all of these guys are unstoppable forces, but... He's good enough to give them some type of problems. During that 2022 playoff run, he was put into isolation 15% of the time, and he allowed just 0.61 points per possession, which was in the 94th percentile. I mean, he was incredible on the, def on the defensive end during that postseason run. I'm going to show a play right now in the first round against the Nets where he's guarding Kevin Durant masterfully. The ball gets loose. He switches on to Kyrie Irving, cuts him off, doesn't let him get a, a shot at the rim, and forces the pass out. The Nets went on to make a three this possession, but it was still fantastic individual defense by Grant Williams. His defense, his shooting, his hustle, his energy. These things can all swing postseason games. Like role guys, that's what you want. You want guys who can come in to a playoff game and they're going to play their roles, but every now and then they're going to swing a game for you. I'm looking at this postseason, right? He didn't play that much. His time in the rotation was very strange with Joe Mazzula. But even then, game four against the Heat, the Celtics are down 3-0. Obviously, they ended up losing the series, but you know they, they took it to a game seven. That game four, he had 14 points on four, six from three and was a plus 15 getting added back in the rotation. This was after being in and out of the rotation. He steps up in a major way in game four and keeps the season alive for the Celtics. Like he was really good in that game. And this is the type of guy the Mavericks needed. They needed a forward. They needed somebody who could guard several different positions. They needed a good defender. They needed a smart player. They needed some toughness. 
They needed a guy who they can count on in the postseason. A guy who's been in postseason games. A guy who has stepped up to the plate in postseason games. You talk about his defensive versatility. You look back this past season, 100th percentile in defensive versatility. You look at some of the positions he's guarded, 37% of the time guarding forwards, 34% of the time guarding guards. And the interesting thing for Grant Williams, 28% of the time guarding centers. Like this is a guy who can play small ball five. And when the Celtics went to that this past season, they had a 120 offensive rating. So the offense, when he's the small ball five, it's dynamic. It's electric, right? Because you have a guy who can space the floor, a guy who can put it on the floor, a guy who's a smart passer, not a great playmaker, but a smart passer. That's a, That opens up a lot of things for your team offensively. And speaking about his offensive game, that's, that's the part of his game that gets critiqued the most, I would say. There's some interesting wrinkles to it. Like he's already a solid enough Offensive guy for a role player, right? Stand in the corner. He's going to be elite on catch and shoot threes in a system like Dallas. That's going to work out perfectly, right? Because they generate Luca and Kyrie generate so many great open looks for for their shooters. But there's some interesting upside to his offensive game. And again, he's only 24 years old, so there's still room for improvement. And I'm interested to see if Dallas sort of taps in to some of the stuff that wasn't needed as much when he was a member of the Celtics. Like he has some upside on his on his relocation threes, right? It's more than just catch and shoot. 33% on step back threes. He showed some like interesting steps this past season in, you know, his relocating threes, his sidestep threes, his step back threes. It's not something you want him going to all the time, but it is something that he show he has shown some improvement in. He has shot 43% from three in his postseason career. 43%. That's the sixth best in postseason history among players with 153-point attempts or more. Again, this is just, God, getting a guy this young who is this experienced in the postseason and who has stepped up and had major postseason performances for $13.5 million a year in today's NBA, that's that's an insane value. Like, that is next. that is such a good value for the Mavericks, especially considering this guy is going to start for them. Like, he's going to be their starting four on opening night unless something crazy happens. He's going to start for them. Getting a guy like that at this value is nuts. Like, Nico is chefing. It's crazy what he's doing. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but he is a great corner shooter. He's one of the best in the NBA. 42% on corner threes last year, 47% the year before. His corner three volume is always towards the top of the league. And he's replacing a guy in Reggie Bullock who shot more corner threes this past season than anybody else in the NBA. So those opportunities are going to be there for him. He's going to get a lot of great looks in the corner. Again, playing in next to a guy like Luka Doncic, who attracts so much attention, who is a walking paint touch, and who is such a great drive and kick guy. And the same can be said for Kyrie Irving. Like, these guys find their guys in the corner, and Grant Williams is one of the better corner three guys we have in the league. Last season, the Mavericks shot 11.5 corner threes per game, which was the most in the NBA. The next closest was the Knicks at 10. So they're letting that thing fly from the corner. And another thing the Mavericks desperately need offensively, guys who can attack closeouts, right? Guys who can put the ball on the floor and do a little bit of something whenever, uh, you know, defenses aggressively attack them in the corner. And Grant Williams can do that. He's not perfect. He's not a perfect offensive player by any stretch of the imagination. You know, do you want him constantly dribbling the basketball? No, of course not. But it is a skill set that he possesses, right? Let's not forget this guy in college had an elite post-up game. Like that was his calling card. That, that was like, that was what made him so intriguing as a prospect was it was this kind of undersized guy, but he was so dominant in the post offensively. He could guard a bunch of different positions and he could shoot the three. Now that part of his game is kind of out of the equation entirely now in the NBA. Just don't know if he's big enough for it really, but it is something. And like I said earlier, I'm interested to see if the Mavericks sort of try out some other things with him that he just wasn't allowed to do in Boston for obvious reasons, like the pick and roll stuff. Is there going, there's going to be plenty of opportunities for him in the short roll. And I do think as a playmaker, you know, he's not amazing. He's not great, but he's more than capable, which is more than what most players on the Mavericks roster last season were capable of doing in the short roll. It's going to be a very interesting dynamic. I'm excited for a bunch of different reasons. I'm excited for the defensive versatility, the toughness, the playoff experience. Such a valuable thing to have in this league. And to get it from a 24-year-old, like you're getting younger and better and somebody with a ton of postseason experience, that's a rare player to come across. For $13.5 million, Nico, you crazy guy. You're a crazy guy. Again, is he a perfect player? No, of course not. 49% on twos in the 2022 postseason, 18% in the paint outside of the restricted area. That's an ugly, ghastly number, right? But again, it's something that he showed improvement at times over this past season. Let's not forget, Grant Williams was a guy who, 
I think like in December was leading the league in true shooting percentage. He got into a bit of a shooting rut there like after January. It was just in and out of the rotation. It was just really weird. And there were times in that in last year's playoffs for the Celtics where he needed to be on the floor. They needed his toughness. They needed his defense. And for some reason, they just went away from him. And I don't really get why. Um, but, you know, it's Joe Missoula. He's an NBA coach. I'm not. So I'm not going to question him. Even though I am going to question him a tiny bit. Why, Joe? Can you explain that to us? And I do have to wonder from the Celtics' point of view, you're losing, you're, you're a team that's had toughness questions, right? People have questioned your toughness in years past, and you're losing probably your two toughest players in Grant Williams and Marcus Smart and replacing them with Chris Stapp's poor Zingas. I do, I do wonder what the, like, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I've seen Chris Stapps Porzingis in the postseason fail to post up Rajon Rondo. So I just, I don't know. I love this for the Mavericks. I question it for the Celtics. There were times where I didn't think it was possible, but then it was like I felt something. The universe spoke to me and they said, Grant Williams, Grant Williams will be on the Mavericks. And I just knew it. I knew it was happening. That's when the recruitment video started popping up. So anyways, I'm super excited for this. I think it's a great signing for the Mavericks. I think it's a great deal. Reggie Bullock is going to be missed. He was a rotational player, but you know, you're know you upgrading in the form of Grant Williams. The 2030 pick swap, yeah, you know that's just the price you have to pay sometimes, and we'll cross that bridge when we get there. That, that does have the potential to be very valuable for the San Antonio Spurs, but again, what are you going to do? Like You have to get better. You have to improve. And this is just how you do it sometimes. I just, I love the addition, getting younger, the postseason experience, the price, $13.5 million is a great, great, great price for Grant Williams. I'm excited. Nico Harrison, you're good.